What's up? This is Patrick of RadiCards.com, and in this video, we'll be reviewing my experience at the September 30th through October 2nd Dallas Card Show. Now, this was a smaller show uh, at the Arlington Expo Center, and um, it's like I said before, it's kind of a ways out. So, although it's like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I just go to the Saturday uh, because it's it's gas is expensive, <laughs> and I can usually cover the whole room in a single day and have time left over for like networking or whatever. So. I don't need to be there for more than a day anyway. I really like that venue. It's so cool. Um, I learned recently that uh, that venue had been used to host the national convention uh, a couple of years in the late 80s, early 90s. Such a cool thing to go there. And it was like, it's just kind of a fun thing to know that from that perspective of the national. Man, the national has outgrown that room that size like by multipliers of, of that space. And so... Um, in those early that early decade of the national i can see how it kind of had grown into something like that such a cool thing i just love that so much so we're talking about six cards here i bought more than the six cards but my budget was i brought i don't need to bring a lot at this show because the way i collect the way i buy i just don't need a lot of money with me i don't buy high-end stuff usually so um well, I take it back. Like I buy high end things, but I find the high end stuff in bargain bins and stuff. And you, I, it, my knowledge allows me to pull those things out. But I, I do pretty well with how much I spend on those items. So we'll be talking about six out of the, the block of stuff I bought. And everything I bought here came to less than $47. So I was really excited about that. We're going to talk about the cards and then we'll talk about how much I paid for each card. So let's jump right into it here. This is a 1983 Topps uh, Ryan Samberg card in a BGS 7.5. Now I had seen this at uh, a dealer's booth who had a PSA 8 um, Tony Gwynn rookie from the same set. I thought about getting that because that's one of my favorite cards. But the Ryan Samberg is, is very close second because it comes in the same set. It's one of the big three from 83. And um, it... it it reminds me of some childhood memories. I can remember, well, gosh, I guess I was, man, maybe eight, seven or eight, I think. And my brother had his friend over, and his friend was a big Ryan Sandberg fan. And so he had all these amazing Ryan Sandberg cards. And we were talking, this is kind of a ways, a while, a long time ago back. Um, and uh, I remember he had the 83 Tops Sandberg rookie, and I'd be like so floored by that. I'm like, wow, that's you have that Ryan Sandberg rookie card. The, the one to get, because he's in Donruss and Fleer, but the Topps card is the more popular card. And so as I kind of like grew into like my early teens and then like mid-teens and stuff, I, I finally acquired a, a, an 83 Topps Ryan Sandberg. I have, I have a bunch of them now, but um, it's to me a favorite card from that 80s block. I mean, it's a classic rookie card of a classic player. Ryan Sandberg is he was fantastic for the Cubs for so long. And so um when I saw this at the show as a BGS 7.5, like what a cool thing uh to get graded and then come back at this kind of random grade. The pop on the 7.5 BGS for this Ryan Sandberg 83 tops is above 500. So they're they're around. It's a very popular card to have graded, so I'd assume that something like this wouldn't be a pop one. Sandberg is a big name, it's a key card from that set. Um, so it's going to be sent in a lot. The most common grades for this card are 8 and 8.5. So that's where the bell curve exists. And it, it has standard deviations on either side. Um, so obviously the higher grade ones are going to be more desirable. I just don't see them out in the wild high grade of this card. It, it's just a rare. It's a kind of a rare card to see just kind of randomly. This guy was a nice, he was a nice dealer. Good to talk to. And it's funny. I, I saw the, the 83 tops Tony Gwynn and an 8. And I kind of just like went about my business that day um, and went through the rest of the show and uh, saw great things, bought some stuff. And I was just kind of thinking, do I want to get the the Gwyn or the Ryan or both? I want to get at least one of them. So as I was shopping around, I was telling my buddy Jim about it. And then um, I was shopping around some more. And then I was like, I think I'm going to go back and get the Gwyn. And when I got back, it was sold. And so I was like, well, I'm just going to get the Ryan Sandberg. And that's, that's, that's just as good a card to me to have and um not a museum quality piece this won't go up on the museum a lot of these kind of like lower grade classics or lower grade cards they just get filed away they don't get i don't scan them in i don't put them on the museum 
It's not to say I wouldn't put them on a blog post scanned in as a single. That that may happen at some point. Uh, but obviously, if I get a higher grade, I would use the higher grade example because it's the higher grade. But I do like the BGS slab on this. I don't often see vintage type stuff BGS slab. It's used like BVG or something, but I even I rarely even see that stuff. So it's kind of nice to see a classic from 83. And I think 83 is is a vintage set, in my opinion. When I, people say like usually qualify vintage 74 and back, but man, 83 is 39 years ago. And so I think that's vintage. I mean, I kind of qualify vintage like, gosh, now up to like 91. <laughs> it's weird to think about that because there's 91 was a great year for collecting. There's a lot of modern stuff, modern quote with quotes on it, right? Because that was, you know, 31 years ago. Um, but yeah, look at Jeff Bagwell rookie cards and Mo Vaughn official rookie year cards because he's found in 1990 score and 1990 Bowman. And so, uh, Chuck Knobloch is a big one from 91 as well. Obviously, he's found stuff from years pri a year prior. But in 91, I remember collecting and, and um, Daryl Strawberry being on the, the Dodgers, you know, being traded to Dodgers. Like, but it's so it's so far removed from current year stuff. Um, I mean, a lot of those guys' kids are in pro ball now. A lot of them are, are like that generation's, their kids are in pro ball and have been in pro ball for like, say, 10 years. And so like it's it's when I think about it like that, uh, just it's just a different perspective on cards um, and on players and generations and things and so and it just reminds me that I'm not that young anymore but I still feel really good and so I'm st I still collect I'll always be collecting and it's just a very a snapshot to when I was like a younger kid collecting and always being in awe of people who had certain rookie cards in their collection because I can remember in the mid 90s a friend of mine was a big Wade Boggs fan and I had his 84 tops. And he, he was like, I wanted to impress him. So I, I said, I have, a, I have a really old Boggs card. And it was the 84 tops. But it wasn't significant because it wasn't the rookie card. So it was some years before I'd get the Wade Boggs 83 tops. Like, I don't know when I got my first one. Um, the 83 tops set is just so cool, though. So 1983 tops is a fantastic set. And it's the second time tops used a design that features both the a headshot and an action photo on the same side of the card. They were the first time they did this was in 1963. They did it 20 years later in 1983 this set and they did it 20 more years later in 2003 and they're going to do it again in 2023. So every 20 years they do this kind of concept, they implement the same concept. I don't know what the significance of it is in 20 years, but that's been the frequency with which Tops has utilized this concept. So 2023 Tops is going to have headshot player image on the same side of the card on the front cool concept but i always go back to 83 tops because it's so cool i just love it it's so awesome price paid for the 1983 tops ryan sandberg and a bgs 75 is 15 dollars. all right moving on here we're gonna talk about another ryan sandberg this time a 1986 tops base card this is card number 690 uh you're probably thinking dude why are you showcasing 86 tops ryan sandberg this one's gnarly i bought like 10 copies of this card at like in like the 10 cent bin at this show I got them all for less than 10 cents because I paid less for the block. I calculated it down, but I'm just going to say here for keeping the math simple, 10 cents. Um, and so the the reason why I'm showcasing this card is because the worst one of the block of them that I got at this show. This card is gnarly. It's got like, it's off centered, it's off registry, it's off color, it has a huge pink print dot, like spot thing. You can see it there. Big old gnarly, disgusting thing. And a nice big crease. It's got it all. Um, <laughs> so funny. When I see stuff like this, I'm like, man, what happened? Why the pink print dot? Like, what what was the deal with that? There's another one I acquired at the show on that block that has the print dot, too. But it's in noticeably better condition. It's, like, slightly better registry, no crease, like, better color. It's just a better-looking example, but it's got that big old huge pink thing right there. This card takes me back to memories of my youth, um, and I brought this up before. My family went to this convention when we were living in Alaska at the Sullivan Arena, and um, it was like a kind of a swap meet thing or whatever. It was like a it's like a, a state fair, but in indoors, and uh, a lot of interesting vendors. And my mom each gave us like twenty bucks, and I went around and bought like gag gifts. <laughs> but my brother found a baseball card dealer, and he was buying like setting aside all the stars from the eighties, like eighty one through like. 
86 tops. And he was just sitting outside all the stars. And I remember looking at his collection and be like, what was it? What am I doing with all this like fake doo doo <laughs> and whoopee cushions and stuff? So I was like immediately had buyer's remorse, right? And so I, I took, I went back to the, the, the seller and I was like, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have bought all this stuff. And I, I made a fool of myself, but I was a young, little kind of little, little kid. And, but, you know, bless the guy's heart. He took it all back and gave me back my 20 bucks. And we were like, time to go. So I didn't get a chance to go through the cards. I mean, granted, my brother, he parsed out all the good stuff anyway. And um, this Sand Sandberg was one of the cards. And I remember seeing it and be like, wow, you got the 86 top Sandberg. I think that that, that convention was like 90 or 91. Um, and so 86 tops had already aged a little bit of four or five years or whatever. Assuming my 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 memories are serve me correctly, and so when I saw the '86 tops Sandberg, I mean, yeah, I got good stuff like '81 tops Harold Baines rookies, '85 tops on Andre Dawson, Julio Franco, a bunch of great '80 '85 top stars, and I remember thinking, "Gosh, I wish I would have found that. I would have gone through it." And um, this card kind of stuck out to me. I think it's that image of Ryan Sandberg kind of smiling. It's just a great image of him, a younger, younger Sandberg. He's got a great smile. He's got a good appearance. Just a classic baseball look. It's weird he can pin that out. You know, like certain guys just look like they're baseball players. Ryan Sandberg has always looked like a baseball player to me. Just a great looking dude. And so um when I saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, the 86 tops, Ryan Sandberg. What a great card to get. You know. And um, I was like, I'll just set that aside. And so when I found this really obscure, like horrendously conditioned version of this card, I was like, well, I definitely have to get that. And you know what's funny is like, I pulled out the stack of cards and then I pulled out like a stack from the 25 cent bin. And then I like, because of my budget at this show, I was like, what am I? I always do this. So like take a, some amount and then no matter how, the price point, I always parse out and like, make sure that it's going to fit in my collection so like everything i buy fits so i don't have any like weird stragglers just random cards and all that stuff would have fit like 10 cents 25 cents even the dollar stuff or whatever that i would have gone through i didn't but um i pulled all this stuff out and and then i like put it all back because i bought some things from the stack and i put it all back but then i reminded as i'm walking through and i almost left the show and as, as i'm walking out of the show i'm like you know what i should probably just go back and get those cards so I was like, I was halfway down the hallway to the exit doors and I turned around and just went back to the dealer in the room to re-enter the convention hall, went back to the dealer, pulled those cards out, the 10 cent block, walked up. He's like, I'll grab these. He's like, okay. And they, they were so great that those dealers are so cool. I, 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 I quoted a price and they actually qu counted at a lower price. <laughs> I'm like three bucks. They're like, how about two? I'm like, you know what? You seem like a nice guy. <laughs> two is fine. <laughs> and so, um, that was such a cool thing. And uh, so I walked away with, with a stack of cards and um, this, these were in it. And I was so, so rad to, to have, have guys like that in the show. I mean, it's like kind of a joke. I bring up like, I think it was, it was 35 cards is what it was. Yeah. That's what it was. And I was like, okay, big spender, 35 cards in a 10 cent bin. What's the best you can do? So obviously I quote this at 10 cents, got it for less than 10 cents, but I'm gonna keep the math simple here. So I got this card for 10 cents. Let's just say. So there you have it. This is the uh, 1986 Topps Ryan Sandberg classic card. You know, 86 Topps is such a great set. I love the black, like, team header. It's so cool. Uh, 85 Topps football kind of has a black border thing going on it that's really cool, too. But the 86 Topps baseball just kind of sticks with youthful memories. The the Sullivan Arena Convention Hall is, is, is one of them, maybe the most important one. So anyway, moving on here. His next two, we talked about two Ryan Sambers, and now we're going to talk about two Mark McGuire's. Uh, these next two came from the same seller. I've built up rapport with him. Super good dude. Really nice guy. I pulled these out of his showcase, and the prices were already pretty reasonable, but I was like, hey, I wonder if I can get these for like a little bit less. So I offered him offered him some amount, and I'll, I'll tell you here in a minute what I paid. But um, the first being... Um, they're, they're both cards from 97, so we've got a... Let's talk about first one. 97... Bowman Chrome International Refractor, okay? So this is a classic set that I've been slowly chipping away at the set build for like, I don't know, the last 10 years or so, just very slowly just grabbing a few cards here and there. I'm not that far into it, uh, but I do love it. It is just a great set. I love the flags in the background. They're just so cool. It's just such a cool set, man. It's the first year of Bowman Chrome, 
And uh, obviously you got four different parallels. Well, the, the, the base set is a parallel because it parallels all the other parallels. So like I just qualify the base set as a parallel. So you got the base set, the international, the refractor, and the international refractor. And this one's the, the highest tier um, parallel. It's the international refractor. They're so cool. I just love these cards so much. So the guys is priced at like pretty good price. And so it's like, okay, so I'll set that one aside. I just double checked on my phone if I needed the card and I did. Uh, I always like to do that with, with certain sets because the price points are kind of higher. This and the next one we'll talk about is, is like that. The price points are a lot higher. So I just want to make sure I needed a card still. And even if the price point was like lower into like a certain like number, I'd probably have bought it again just because I like the card. And I have a little Mark McGuire PC section in my PC box. And so that'll just go in there as a double or whatever if I don't even need the card. So grab that. And he also had the 1997 Finest Embossed Refractor. This is the silver subset card, card number 305. And um, I was like, okay, I need this one for the set too because this is another set I've been chipping away at for the last 10 plus years. And I'm pretty far into these, but I'm not doing the golds. I'm just doing the silvers. I just think these cards are so cool. They're so pretty. Um, and so it was, I think, I think he was asking 15 for the international fractor and 30 for this embossed. And I offered, I offered 30 for the pair and he took it. Um, and so he, he likes, it's nice to have a guy on your side who can work with you. It's funny. You, you go to these shows and it's important for us to get to know other people and share with them what you collect, because that'll give them incentive to look out for you when they come across collections and things. And so this guy knows I like 90s stuff since I met him two years ago or whatever. I think it was like a year and a half ago. And um, so he knew. He was like, yeah, you, you, I, know, I know what you collect. I'm like, yeah, man, this is, these are for sets I'm building. He had a Sosa too, but I, didn't, I wasn't interested in getting Sosa. It's a little, a little beyond what I was willing to pay for the Sosa. So he knew what I collected. So um, when I saw these cards, I was like, oh, yeah, totally. Like I was thinking about you when I, when I put those out. I was like, okay, cool. I, like, I appreciate it, man. So I was like thinking, I was like, I should probably just get the Meguiars. So grab these. It's a 30 for the pair. So I calculated it's 20 bucks for the embossed refractor and 10 bucks for the international refractor. That's kind of the way I was thinking about it based on my counters for his price points. So I was really happy to get those. Those are cool, uh, really great cards. So really stoked to get those two. So what are you up to? Like $45.10. That's where we are so far. Okay. This next one here, this is a Todd Hollinsworth 1997 EX2000 Stardate 2000. <laughs> Stardate 2000. And um, these cards are so nice in hand. They really are. You can't really notice it like on this picture here, but having them in hand, they're very pretty. They're very affordable cards. Uh, they're reasonable. You can get them for pretty good prices. I mean, there's there's some bigger names in the set, but they're obtainable. So if you want to like go for the set, it's 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 doable. Uh, without a huge headache or a big big spend at least right now at like the publication of this video who knows what will happen like 20 years like <laughs> probably be super expensive i don't know but whatever this was in a dollar box i pulled seven cards out of the dollar box this was one of the cards and i got all the block for five dollars so obviously i pay a little bit less than a dollar but for this video i'm just gonna say i paid a dollar for it so really it's like the advertising cost um that i'm calculating into what i paid so like it was advertised as a dollar even though I paid less than that because I bought more than five cars. I paid five dollars. So glad to get this. I think this might be one. This is one of my first cards. Might be my first card from this set. Um, but whatever the case, I was glad to get this card. And I always like Todd Hollinsworth stuff. So that was a dollar. Forty six dollars and ten cents is where we are so far. Last card on the list here. Todd Helton. 2005 Zenith White Hot. So this card is reminiscent of the set that Pinnacle made 10 years prior. Except for the 2005 installment has Relic Parallels. So you can get this card with like a chunk of Relic in it as another version of this card. I saw this card in the quarter bin. I was like, I think I'm going to grab it because it's such a cool looking card. It's a beautiful, a full Dufax, the whole thing. Um, just beautiful looking cards. And um, I, I miss this technology. It's still kind of used. It's called like Nufex, I think is what Panini calls it. Uh, it's still very pretty. I think Panini does a great job. I've always said, I say that a lot because of even their limitations, they still produce uh, really great content for collectors. And so I'm um, really glad to get this in the quarter bin. So this was one of like the 35 cards I had. It was like the Ryan Sandbergs and this card and some other whatever stuff that just got filed away that didn't make the video content. I could talk about them. 
you know, I, I could talk about any of the cards I, I've, I've purchased, but usually when I parse out stuff for video content. It's like the stuff I find most interesting. You know, I mean, I could I could really dialogue and, and, and kind of talk shop around every card I've, I own. Um, and I could probably bore you to tears going through every card I get at these shows. But I come with a stack. Hey, we're going to go through 237 cards. Uh, we'll just go through this card by card, shall we? <laughs> it's not necessary. There you have it. This is the these are the six cards I got total total paid because that was 25 cents. Uh, Forty six dollars and thirty five cents, which I think was a good deal. You know, um, I was happy to get those cards for for that price. And, and, and I think with the next Arlington show, I'm going to come with a little bit more um, budget because I realized like even though the last show I didn't spend that much and this show I didn't spend that much. It's nice to have a little bit more of a cushion to go with. Um, and so I probably will do that the next time that the Dallas Card Show is run in, in Arlington. I really like that venue. It's far. It's totally it's so worth it, though. It's so fun. So there you have it. This is the uh, review of my experience at the September 30th through October 2nd Dallas Card Show at the Arlington Expo Center. Thank you for tuning in to Radicards TV on Radicards.com. I'm your host, Patrick Reno, and until next time, enjoy collecting. If you like this content, please subscribe. Thanks. Enjoy collecting.